Hello everyone and welcome back to more of the fruit of Grisaia in the last episode. Mark and I had a horrible nightmare recounting when she was kidnapped and forced to watch her father die in front of her eyes. Absolutely horrible, horrible memory. And now we continue. I don't know if the words Machina just spoke were directed at me, or her real father. But either way, they startle me, conscious as I am of hiding things from her. Watching the girl sniffle miserably in my lap, I can feel my own mood sinking. It's not like me to get pulled along by the emotions of others. Have I gotten weaker? The thought's unpleasant, disturbing even. It's like I've bitten into something and felt my teeth rattle loosely in my skull. The animal variety show on the television, having reached the series' second half of the program, begins to broadcast the story of a wolf raising its children. It's like that movie Princess Mononoke. Absolutely excellent movie. You should all watch it. Wounded and bloodied, the wolf on the screen fights to protect its children. No matter how many times it's knocked down, the animal keeps standing up again. I see. Weaker isn't the right word, is it? Makina reaches out reflexively, as if requesting help. I take her hand and squeeze it firmly. I'm right here, Makina. When we're like this, I can almost fool myself into believing I've become a good person. And it's embarrassing to discover I'm still capable of these sorts of feelings. But it also brings me something close to happiness. At the same time, there's an undercurrent of ease. The same old doubts. Is it really alright for me to touch this girl with my soiled hand? But I've made up my mind. If, the, if this girl reaches out for help, I'll take her hand. I'll hold on to it as long as I can. And if I should falter, I would go and fall along. Machina's hand, grasped tightly in mine, feels a little lighter than it did before. I haven't spent much time in any halfway normal school, so I can't really call myself an authority on this subject, but the thing called homework is truly a pain in the ass, as it always has been. Even when exams are approaching and you know you have to buckle down, you'll find yourself making more progress on cleaning your room than reading your textbooks, reflexively seeking out any possible distractions from, from reality. Some people handle better than others, but in general, nobody's at their best when forced to confront something troublesome. Just facing up to an arduous pile of problems requires some real willpower. At present, mocking is the homework I need to confront, and due to the truly enormous scope of this problem, Using youthful energy to force my way to a solution hasn't gone so smoothly. There's been a lot of unproductive agonizing going on. Of course, considering the imminent danger, it's clear that taking immediate action would be best. If I've got the time to procrastinate using my daily running routine as a pretext, it'd probably be better spend charging it into the user home with a dagger in my hand and at least trying to do my duty. However, we're dealing with a conglomerate strongly tied to the nation itself, no matter how Fiercely a single mutt barks and snarls outside the gate. They're not exactly going to shake in their shoes. And even if, by some chance, the world were to tilt in an unexpected direction, how could we hope to compensate society for the resulting damage? No matter how hot I think, the answers don't come. It's easy enough to boast that you'll stick your guns no matter how it tries to push you around. But the simple fact is that fighting the power almost never ends badly for the power in question. Hell, if one individual's stubborn resistance were enough to frustrate those entrusted with authority, the way of the world would change fundamentally, and not necessarily for the better. In the end, I'm not much more than the country's pet dog and the heirs who bear exceptional influence with my master. I can't even bear my fangs against them. But here's what it's come down to. I want to keep Machina safe, even if it costs me my life. I don't give a damn about the national interests on a very simple, very personal level. Rusimakina is my first and absolute priority. 
I love you, Machina, more than anyone else in the world. Don't look so shocked. I'm affirming my own feelings, that's all. The fact that I love you, that you're the one thing I should prioritize above all else. I was just speaking those thoughts out loud to see if they rang true. Sorry for the train. In terms of my personal feelings, there's nothing wrong with those words, Machina. Definitely the most important thing in the world to me. However, as a wise woman once said, there's no woman in the world more troublesome than your mother. It's a little hard to say this to her own daughter, but I don't think it's possible to phrase this both gently and accurately. I'm gonna be frank here. Your mom's a psycho sociopathic bitch. And despite this long, convoluted attempt at an excuse, when you get right down to it, I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid of her. To be honest, I don't have the strength to confront your family head on. Given that, there are only two possibilities. We can run and hide, or we can try to hold out and find a way to endure their one-sided abuse. To be honest, I can't bring myself to make that call. What do you want me to do? No. Please, tell me what I should do, Makina. Hmm. I see. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Alright, in that case, let's get a third option. Sorry, a third opinion, I should say. We can pretend like they're the ones who pushed us into this. Then do whatever we want while blaming it on them. How's that sound? No matter how skilled a soldier you may be, when you're unsure of the next move, don't try to muddle through it alone. Consult your superior officer. Battles are won and lost on the big picture level of strategy. No one man on the ground can see the whole board. Blundering ahead blindly, guided only by emotions or values, is the kind of criminal stupidity that invites disaster. When I was very young, the person who looked down on the board from above was always my sister. If I did as she told me, I could at least avoid the worst case scenario, no matter what the situation. After my sister's death, the next person to watch the big picture for me was my master. But Asakwa's advice tended to be a little heavy on the brute force approach, sometimes at the point of excess. JB was an indispensable counterweight, leaning heavily in the opposite direction. Asakwa loved the high risk, high return play. JB strongly favored low risk, low risk, low risk, low return. Raised under their mutual guidance, I naturally began to weigh their opinions against each other, and searching for the answer that felt correct for me. But today, Asaka was no longer around to offer one of those staggeringly drastic plans that always left you wondering if she'd even thought about the consequences. Even if I could consult with JB about this, she'd without a doubt recommend looking for a way to maintain the status quo. But that's nothing more than the passive opinion of a woman focused on the way the winds are blowing. Should we give in or resist? To break this sort of deadlock, you really do need someone who can provide a big picture perspective. We need help. Isn't it obvious? There aren't many people in the school even familiar with the circumstances, and despite the whole neutral observer act, you're constantly giving us precise and timely advice. You know more than you let on. I don't expect you to do anything. Hell, look at it as standing in for a coin flip. Just casually call it heads or tails if you want. You do understand our situation, right? Damn. There is no one else. I 
I understand we're asking a lot, but if I had to make an analogy, faced with the approach of an overwhelmingly powerful American army, do you continue fighting down to the last soldier, or accept being branded a coward, swallow your tears, and return to help lay the cornerstones of your nation's long, painful rebirth? Even if you consult a non-com who's taken over your platoon after the CO bit the dust, it'll just snow the hell do I know. Make up your own damn mind, in response. If anything, you're better off making a field appointment in the absence of a true CO shout, Corporal Kazami, you're the leader of this platoon, then give him a temporary promotion to second lieutenant. Your man can help with stiffen his spine. However, even knowing full well that I'm being unreasonable, I want to ask you once more. What should I do, Commander Sakaki? Sorry, I was playing out a scenario in my head. You know what's funny? I, I read something that there was a Japanese soldier who was fighting on an island and he refused. Because uh, during World War II, the Japanese soldiers, they, they wouldn't surrender. You'd have to kill them. Surrendering was seen as very disgraceful in, in their culture. So there was this one Japanese soldier who never got the memo that the, the war was over, right? I think it was World War II. Maybe it was Vietnam War. Well, whatever. One of those wars. And he would not surrender. He would not believe. They had to actually get his old commander or whatever, captain or whatever, to come down and tell him that the war was over and he could stop fighting. It was crazy. Not just a little, little fun tidbit of information. <laughs> well, so you say, but if you remove but a single character from the name of Sakiki, you're left with the kanji for God. Sakiki, my friend. No, my God. Tell us what we should do. I beseech you. <sighs> there are no atheists in foxholes, as they say. The opponent's far, far more powerful than us. That reality is clearer than the sight of the bombers soaring overhead on their way to devastate the mainland. How meaningful would it be to barricade ourselves away in this island? Is dying and becoming a patriotic spirit really the only righteous choice? But survival gained by turning tail and fleeing is a shameful thing. Anyone with a shred of compassion for those left behind couldn't accept such a selfish path. The only easy way to resolve this is by sending Makina home to her family immediately. But what awaits her there is death. In the spirit, if not in the body. But if I were to flee with Makina in tow, those left behind in this school might very well suffer the consequences as well. In the worst case scenario, there is no guarantee they won't be taken as hostages. Well... We're after their backs to the wall here. I understand that I'm being tested here, but it seems that I'm a hopeless loser who can't make his own decisions when the push comes to shove. Please help me, Sakaki. That's all I ask. Please, pretty please. please. Yoshiko. But Yoshiko. Dakara, Yumiko, katte ni Yoshiko ni sureta to nando mo itte iru desho. Sorry about that, kids these days. Feel the need to invent slang for everything they see. Try to let it slide. Uh, you're not wrong. I mean, that's exactly how it is. I know we're being incredibly selfish. This might end up causing serious problems for you and the others, but even so, I want to protect Makina. Go ahead. Well, 
イリスさん本人はもちろんのこと他の学園生においても保護はしきれないというのが現状よ同じ学び屋で席を並べた友を放り出すのは私としても忍びないところではあるけれども学園経営者の娘としては苦渋の決断をせざるを得ないイリス・マキナさんあなたを当学園から除籍します除籍In other words. 休学でも退学でもなく除籍つまり書類上はイリス・マキナはこの学園にはいなかったということになるわ I see You're erasing every document with the name of Rusumakan on it. It's probably only prudent under the circumstances. Which would mean me as well? Eh, Anata no yo. Kazami Yuji nante gakse, uchi ni wa i n a k a t a So re de ino de shou? Gakuen chou ya hoka no ko tachi ni wa, watashi kara setsmei shite oku wa? Sorry for the hassle. いいのよ逆に言えばそれぐらいしかしてあげられないのが私なのだから。Alright, Makina, since that's decided, wanna run away with me? うん逃げよう地の果てまでも s a k a k i s right, of course. Whatever I might have said, the truth is I have already made up my mind. The snap of the r u s t e r s fingers is enough to leave people dead. They can't be persuaded or negotiated with. Staying here would leave me grinding my teeth impotently. If I crawl up into a ball and wait for the hurricane to pass, I'll ultimately be forced to kill Makina with my own hands. And given the choice between killing her and running away, I'd naturally choose the latter. And by disappearing into the night without a word would be agonizing, knowing that those who were leaving behind might well face and just suffering, I simply couldn't bring myself to do what I had to be done. And now, Sakaki has agreed to assume the role of protecting this school from the consequences of our actions. Sakaki, thank you. Now I can run away with a clean conscience. Yumi-chan, thank you for me too. I'm just going to get rid of the money. I'm not going to say anything to you. Well, all of the people who have come to the school are going to come back to the school again. 助手席とはいえ、再入学はいつでも歓迎するから。I honestly think there's no resolve in this. I think what we do is this is final. This is it. We gotta run away. For how long, we don't know. Where to, we don't know. Just not here. That's all we know. Apparently, overcome with emotion at Sakahi's unexpectedly warm words, Makina spreads out her arms like a bird five minutes' wings. Taking advantage of the momentary distraction this provides, she proceeds to barrel forward into Makina's verse. Makina's Sakaki's bosom. <laughs> Closing to a grappling range with an exemplary side dash before her target can even begin to evade, Makina twines her legs tightly around Sakaki's knees, cutting off any possibility of retreat. Makina forces her lips against those of her immobilized prey. And the girl's not playing around either. From this passionate lesbian show, accompanied by the faint clacking of teeth against teeth, I sense something like the essence of female friendship. A profoundly moving spectacle. It's a tear to my eye. <laughs> After a while, Sakiki seems to grow somewhat agitated, releasing her grasp on Makina to thump the girl's back like a martial artist signaling surrender. <laughs> But the situation seems to be developing further. Sakaki's slapping against Makina's back becomes progressively weaker, and the muffled grunt s l e a k i n g out of the corner of her mouth grows sweet in tone. Now that I look very carefully, while maintaining her twining leg lock on Sakaki, Makina seems to be 
grinding her knees vigorously against the woman's crotch, providing rough erotic stimulation. Looks like you stepped up your game once again, Makina. Taking in the radiant scene of womanly affection and noting with approval the maturation of my favorite pupil, I fold my arms in front of my chest and nod deeply in satisfaction. Yes, this is right. Perhaps running out of breath at last, Makina extracts her tongue from Sakaki's mouth with a wet pop, then sucks down a great lungful of air. I hadn't managed to say goodbye yet. Don't ask me, perhaps she grew flustered over being brought to the verge of a very light orgasm by the Lexicon. Well, you screwed something. Who oh, no, knows, she made a good show of being angry, but for all we know, she might be abandoning herself to self-pleasure even as we speak. Using the lingering reverberations as fuel. Not good, run, Makina! As a bone projectile shatters noisily against the floor behind us, Makina and I flee at a sprint. You know, Makina, we have to say goodbye to the school now. Are you really alright with that? It's either this or I kill you. You know, there's no other there's no option C. Oh. It's fine, you won't die, I won't let you. There's nothing to worry about. Well, now that we've decided to move, there's no reason to drag our feet. Sometimes a single minute's va uh, vacillation can prove fatal. Therefore, we're going to leave this place immediately. I'll give you 30 minutes to attend to your affairs and gather your belongings within that time, then regroup here, understood? Better than 40 seconds, right? Get a move on! The clock's already ticking! After watching the girl patter off upstairs, I begin my own preparations for departure. That said, my personal luggage is pretty damn minimal. Min minimal? Minimal? All I've got is a single oversized backpack I loved here from Yamanashi. And even that's only halfway unpacked. I won't be taking any of the additional household goods I purchased after my arrival at this school. Made it easy enough to buy new ones if they become necessary. And the only things I really need for my daily life in the short term are my tableware and portable stove. Cramming these into my backpack takes all of five minutes. I pause briefly to debate over what I should do with some half-read books I could let me, but well, since I probably won't have many choices, chances to come return them, it's best to leave them here, I guess. If I feel the need to finish reading one of them, I can just purchase my own copy. Well then. You guys just can buy. Since I finished packing nice and early, I have some time to think about what comes next. When you're on the run, a city is the ideal choice. The more densely populated, the better. Human beings have a natural tendency to hide out in some quiet little rural town in the middle of nowhere. But that's a mistake. 
The only people who think the country is full of kind hearted folk living tranquil lives are city dwellers who've never been there. In reality, your typical village is a den of insular, malicious, and narrow minded people, full of petty pride and obsessed with appearances. The countryside is a hell of a lot scarier than any city. And naturally, it's all the more cold and hostile a place for a complete stranger the locals bear no social obligations or debts of gratitude to. When I was a kid, my mother and I learned this has a lesson the hard way. Anyway, if we're going to try to hide out somewhere, ideally it should be a place neither Machina and I have ever visited before. Few people being chased by their enemies take refuge in a place they're totally unfamiliar with. Pursuers naturally start by searching areas where the fugitive would have a home field advantage. If Mom and I had known that back in the day, our lives might have turned out slightly better than they did. The thought does inspire some bitterness. But there's not exactly anything to be done about that now. I can always shake my head firmly and put it out of my mind. So, if we're running somewhere, I guess the city would be best. When you're hiding a tree, do it in the forest. It's always dark at the foot of the lighthouse, yeah. There's a reason those proverbs have been passed down all this time. People pour in and out constantly. The residents are apathetic enough not to glance over the next toilet stall. That's the city for you. No one cares. However, massive crowds do have their downside. Although it'll be harder to find us, it will also become more difficult for us to notice the movements of our enemies. It wouldn't be so bad if we just had a, the competing factions within the Arisa to worry about, but I doubt we're going to get off that easy. My employer Ichigai isn't going to sit back and let me leave. And if, and if Akasaka moves... And there's a possibility our friends in the NSA and the CSS may get involved as well. However, like the old joke goes, if you're in the town on the weekend and notice a Caucasian in golf clothes, leather shoes, and a pair of sunglasses, assume they're CIA. In other words, there are certainly ways to recognize those sorts of people. A thoroughly trained agent in their element is obvious at a glance. You can tell a CIA man when he's standing, a CSS man when he's sitting, and the NSA man when he's walking. Considering the possibility of their involvement, I'd... Probably best to avoid yuppie infested areas of the city where business suits are common and favor places overflowing with flashy young people. A neighborhood where punk kids go to get shit faced would be ideal. Anybody walking straight into that sort of crowd would stand out like a sore thumb. Well then, I guess it's about time. I glance back at the clock. Just about 25 minutes have passed since Mark and I split up. I, heaving the rucksack containing everything I own onto my back, I leave my room and shut the door behind me. Yeah, I think you have a rough idea of the circumstances already, but mocking us in some real danger right now. The two of us are going to be hiding out for a while. No, nothing like that. I mean, even if we did, it wouldn't be a good idea to use it. Well, let's see, if you have any cash on hand, a little farewell donation would be helpful. Although Machiro grimaces a little, she nonetheless retrieves her wallet from her pouch and takes a look inside. There's money bags over here. That's plenty, thanks. I'll make careful use of it. Uh, by the way, Machiro. You're not really acting all that surprised, are you? まあね。ユミコからそれとなく事情は説明されたし、私たちにはどうすることもできないし、むしろ下手に関わろうとしない方があんたたちの助けになるって。The we don't want that. However, as long as you're in the school, seems Sakaki is going to keep you safe. You can just forget about us and go on living normally. I wonder, are we going to come back? I don't know. Well, we're going to find out, hopefully, the next episode of The Fruit of Grisaya. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>